started posting the content, got a few followers, started hitting up like just singers that I knew and didn't know and just messaging them like, hey, would you like to perform with a band on a live stream? You know, we're still in COVID. So mm-hmm. everybody was like eager at that time. To get um, out, work. Yeah, yeah. And, and everybody would come through. And that's kind of how it like developed into a whole thing to where now people started hitting me up. Like, What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Let's Just Be Real podcast. I'm your host, Marissa Tong. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode this week. I'm so happy to be back with another guest. It's been a minute since we had a guest on the show. And today, y'all, I'm sitting down with Jamie (laughs) Foxx. Jamie Foxx is in the building. You know, make it do what it do, baby. I'm just kidding. What's up, T? How are you? I'm well, I'm well. It's been a minute since I've seen you, like, years, but, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for the invite. Yes, thank you for coming. Can you tell the people a little bit about yourself, what you do, your name, who you are? Well, as you know, I'm Jamie Foxx. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I'm T. I go by T on key sometimes. But I'm a musician, entrepreneur. I started a business slash music company, I guess. Um, same thing. And I don't know. You know what? I'm so terrible at describing myself. I, I, I didn't know. I'm it's like I'm always better at describing like the business than me. But yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. Uh, grew up in church. I'm a musician, and I kind of just uh, figured out a way to make my talent my uh, livelihood. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty much. I'm very simple. Yeah, yeah. I feel like creatives too. Like be, when we're like multi-passionate like it's hard to describe what we do because we're doing so much like we were just talking about that before we started rolling for sure like because you're constantly like always you're always doing something so like to narrow it down and be like oh i'm just this like it's not that right because it's so broad um but i mean you know you you have to be a jack of all trades in any creative field you Mm -hmm. know and at least to make it lucrative anyway Mm -hmm. so it kind of comes with the territory. So I feel like if I explain, hey, I'm a musician, you know, just think music overall, anything that has to do with music. Right. Sound, you know. But yeah, right. I'm a sound engineer as well. So yeah. So there's all of that. So Yeah. Ooh, let's talk about, okay, so you're a musician. When I met you a couple of years ago, you were mainly just doing, like, piano, like, playing in the churches. Like, yeah. I mean, from what I knew. Yeah, I didn't know. I wasn't even playing piano yet back then. I was a drummer. Right. Yes, 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 yeah, yes, yes. I was playing drums in church. Oh god! I was a teenager. I was a baby. Oh man! Um, but yeah, I was playing drums at the time. Um, wow, I forgot. I actually forgot about that. Yeah. Um, but slowly but surely, I kind of transitioned to a piano and organ, mainly because I realized even in church, if people don't know, church musicians are paid. <laughs> um, so I started realizing like what I'm making, my little one fifty a week. Versus, like, the organist was making, like, 700 a week. And I was just like, man, and that wow. was, what? I don't even remember what year that was. That was, like, 2011. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So that was good money back then to make 700 back yeah. then. So I was like, yeah, I would like $700 a month, I mean, mm-hmm. a week. Mm-hmm. Like, 700 a week would be great. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of, because I was always hanging out at the church anyway, I started, like, kind of learning and teaching myself. Went on Google, learned, like, piano theory, learned skills, and what note is what. For the longest time, I'd be like saying, oh, I'm playing in E flat and I'm in A flat or something. It was mm-hmm. in a different key and I kept calling it the wrong thing because I really didn't know. And, um, you know, just took the time to really like try to understand and learn and finally got good enough to like play like a couple songs here and there. Super easy songs. Mm-hmm. And then obviously over time, you know, you put your 10,000 hours in, you get better and then you become a master of your craft. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I started becoming the organist (laughs) Mm -hmm. so that was uh one part of it but then even back then when i was a drummer i still had to be like the sound engineer too like you know in church we have like uh, i guess like click tracks is what we call them where you have the like drum machine playing in the background and you just got to keep time to it while you're playing Mm. so it was like little things like that but knowing how to set it up and have it running through the sound system and everything and then helping people with, like, making sure that the mics don't feed back, right. things like that. You, I learned pretty much everything that I do from church. You know, that was, like, the root of it all. But, you know, as I got older 
and bills became a thing. It was like, I need to start making money for real. Right. Like, so it went from like doing favors to like, I'm gigging. Right. And when everything started turning into gigs, it was like, it was cool. I was still working like a nine to five at the time. Mm-hmm. But then when COVID happened, you know, just kind of figured out a way to make it work for me. Mm-hmm. And so now, so since COVID, you've established this company or this business called The Living Room New Jersey or NJ, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Both. Yeah. I, I just, you know, NJ is just for short. Right. You know, it's for New Jersey. So yeah. same thing. So what do you do there? Like, I don't know if you guys have seen on Instagram. If you haven't, definitely make sure you follow The Living Room NJ and we'll tag all that. We'll post it. We'll put the links in the show notes. But so you have these videos, right, that I see on the Instagram feed of like these amazing like singers coming in and like singing and just talking about like what they do. Like, so what's the idea of the, the living room? So it's literally in my living room for everyone that doesn't know this is actually the first time i think I'm i didn't know it. that today <laughs> i didn't know that until today <laughs> yeah it's literally like in my living room at my house um so no one ever does everyone always thinks it's like a venue and you know i guess aesthetics are key to everything but um covid happened like i said everything was shut down couldn't gig couldn't go to church couldn't mm-hmm. do anything as a musician you get bored, you're lonely, you're like, man, I miss like hanging out, just shedding or jamming with my guys, you know? Yeah. So eventually, you know, every week I just, I had some equipment at my house, like nothing crazy yet at the time. And I was just inviting people to come over like, hey, you want to come over and, and work on some music? Let's just like shed, have a good time. Shedding is like what we call jamming or whatever, or practicing, you know, but in a fun way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I hit them up, like, y'all want to come over, come shed? Every week it was like no for like a month, and then like my little sister, shout out uh, Juwani Elise, um, she hit me up and she wanted to come through to do something for her live stream, mm-hmm. and she was like, yeah, it'll be dope. I'll sing. You just play piano, and I was like, okay, cool. Could we get the band? She was like, I mean, I don't mind if it's just us, but if you want the band, we can. I was like, all right, cool, bet. Yeah. So I took a screenshot of like a couple pictures of her, and I sent it to the band. And I was like, yo, do I want to come this week instead? Like, I got the singer coming through. Here she is. And I realized that the cheat code to get guys to show up is have a pretty girl. It's so unfortunate. Thirst trap. It was, you, have to, you literally have to bait them. That's and, crazy. But when they showed up and they saw the vibe and they actually experienced it, then it didn't matter anymore at that point. Now they're like, this is just fun. We don't care who's here. Yeah. You know. Um, Why are men like that? <laughs> Why? Listen, I don't know because then they get in the room and it's like you're not even gonna like shoot your shot or talk to them anyway. Right. So it's like they just want to be around. I think that's really all it comes I get down that. to. I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you knew what you were doing. You were on to something. So it worked. I mean, that was the only thing. I'm like, because I know, like, guys, we we are typical. You know, we're we're, we're typical creatures. So you know, it's not hard to. Uh, beta guy i mean unfortunately listen i mean (laughs) women know this you guys have a thing called pretty privilege right where you can go to the bar sit there and your drinks will be paid for at the end of the night i don't know about that in 2024 anymore Mm, i feel like the city girls ruin that it's still happening (laughs) people are out here tricking every day i I believe you. you And, I believe you. and now it's a uh, it's digital now. Now people are tricking on TikTok with women that they'll oh, never God. see in life. It's a whole thing. I'm, Jesus it's, Christ! It's, re- it's really a whole thing. But That's I, your next business. No, we stop. <laughs> if I could figure out a way, are we, are we allowed to curse? No? Yeah. Oh, okay. If I could figure a way to like, I don't know, make money like being a bad bitch, I would do it. <laughs> I would do it. Like that's that's the most lucrative thing in the world right now. I mean, is it? I don't know. Listen, I don't know. You see a lot of these women that don't work, don't have their own business or anything. But it is working in a sense. If you have to like get cute, you're spending money on makeup. You gotta buy outfits. Are they spending the money though? Know? Maybe or maybe not. Maybe the initial investment. Like, you still got to get cute. It's still your time, you know? Like, if you're going out with a man that, like, you're not really into or you don't really like, like, that's 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 a job. Listen, I get it. You know, I there are men who do it. I just, I don't get it. 
I mean, I I guess I get it. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. I'm like, mm, nah, because you want something real and, yeah. and something that has substance at the end of the day. And they're going to come and go. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? But Lil Wayne said it ain't tricking if you got it. So if you got it to do it, <laughs> by all means, I just think that there's uh, better investments. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> you know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Like, a woman is a good investment, but the right woman. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Not any woman, you know. Yeah. They live in life. They enjoying it. I'm not even hating. <laughs> I hate a little bit because I'll be seeing, like, um, girls like, going to uh, to Greece. Uh-huh. I'm just like, uh-huh. I'm like, that place is really nice. And yeah. And all expense paid for you. I mean. Lucky you. <laughs> also, a lot of girls be lying. We're going way off topic, but I feel like a lot of, a lot of women be lying. Like, they do not. I don't know. I don't know. Nah, some of the women I'm talking about, I know for I a fact it. they have sugar daddies. I believe you. No, I know. I definitely know a few. <laughs> See, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not mad at it. By all means, do your thing. Yeah. So, but go ahead. I'm so, sorry. back to the bait. <laughs> so, you were baiting these men. Okay, so were these musicians that were coming in? Yeah, they were musicians. I, I wasn't just like having people pull up. So, the musicians would come through. Um, they see a pretty girl they played we got the job done yeah everybody was happy at the end of the day but when we finished the session they were just like we should do this a lot more it was like really fun it was a great time it was like hey like why why don't you do this every week so Mm -hmm. i started doing it every week Mm -hmm. started calling in different artists who saw the live stream the first time well after that first week when we did it the first initial one i started to back up like maybe three weeks later because then I took the content and everything and promoted it, created an Instagram page for it, which yeah. is now The Living Room and Jay. Mm-hmm. Started posting things here You have and a there. TikTok too, right? Have the TikTok as well. The Living... It's underscore The Living Room and Jay because somebody already took it and they don't even use the account. Wow. Yeah, I'm probably going to get it flagged. And, and <laughs> I'm, probably gonna fla- I'm probably going to flag the account. That's crazy. I'm just going to report that page every day until I'm they lose dead. that handle. Because they don't use it. And I they feel have, that, And they though. have, like, three followers, and they follow five people. Yeah. And they don't post anything ever. And I check the handle all the time. Yeah. Like, you still got it. Like, just give it up. Right. Like, I'm a, I'm a reporter. <laughs> That's like when you go to buy a domain, and you're like, why does why is this domain sold? Like, this is not even your business name. Like, what, what's and happening? Not, and they're not doing anything with it. It's right. like, what's the point? Like, some people just, like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But... I started uh, posting the content on there, um, obviously following people from, like, my personal page. And just started following even more, like, random singers and people. And then, obviously, word of mouth just, mm-hmm. like, works. Because I have, like, my one friend, um, Danielle, and she'll tell me all the time. She's like, how do you stay so booked? Like, you don't really promote for real. Mm. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, word of mouth, she's, yeah. She's, like, getting like bookings for word of mouth is crazy i'm like oh you know and it goes back to you know before we started rolling i told you a thing called product and packaging or product versus packaging and sometimes you just need both if you have a good product Mm -hmm. great you know and then if you have good packaging as well that's also great Mm -hmm. and i feel like that applies to everything but i'm not going to get that deep absolutely but um yeah so started posting the content got a few followers started hitting up like just singers that i knew and didn't know and just messaging them like hey would you like to perform with a band on a live stream you know we're still in covid so mm-hmm. everybody was like eager at that time to get um, out work yeah, yeah and and jam i mean have I don't a know vibe if, yeah i don't know if you've been to like an open mic or anything like that mm-hmm. so we had some people performing like original music as mm-hmm. local artists or just doing like cover songs and stuff too mm-hmm. and everybody would come through and that's kind of how it like developed into a whole thing to where now people started hitting me up like i want to be there i want to go there like this seems fun this is cool or like hey how many people can i bring and again it's my living room so i'm like like two yeah yeah, (laughs) yeah. you know plus the equipment plus the band like you could bring like two people with you maybe yeah so it turned into a whole thing and then we just started getting bookings for shows like outside like sobs and places like that wow based on like what you were putting out with the living room yeah wow and i mean it got to the point where i was literally able to like quit my job Mm -hmm. like and it was like what i make in one day like you know even doing a wedding Mm -hmm. you know 
is like I was making that in a week. So it, it just made sense. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, started um, realizing, like I said, when you have to be a jack of all trades, you have to take everything. So I was a musician, but I'm also a sound engineer. Then I'm, you know, mm -hmm. DJ. Then I'm like renting equipment out. And then I'm like renting out the rehearsal space for people to be there or whatever, or recordings, yeah. and all types of things. It's a lot. So maybe. Do you have help? Like, do you have an assistant or? No, nah, I do everything a team? myself. Are you serious? Yeah, so I'll manage it, like everybody's schedules. I send out like the set list and the times and then the days, and it gets a lot, especially when I have like multiple things going on. Mm -hmm. And you know, musicians who are gigging, they're not always available. So then you have to know a lot of musicians as well, mm -hmm. or a lot of singers and people who can do the job. So then I have like sometimes I'll have like two, three bands in the same day doing different things. Wow. Yeah. Because I try not to play. I, I'd rather not play as much as possible. Yeah. That'd be, like, that'd be the greatest thing. Do you like more of managing things and being more of like the planner and like, I guess like the businessman versus like the talent? I feel like it depends on the day. Okay. Or it depends on the gig. Okay. Like there are days where it's like, man, this music is really hard. Like, we got to spend some time to really, like, practice and sit down with this and learn this. And it's like, mm, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Like, because then I, I am busy. So it's like I, I have to really, like, cancel something else to, to do that. And it's like I could just call somebody who – because I'm quick to let people know I'm not the greatest. Like, I'm, I'm decent. I mm -hmm. can get the job done. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather call people I know have more time on their hands or even – are just more seasoned and more experienced than I am. And right. been playing longer than me. Mm -hmm. And I just know, like, th they're better. Yeah. They're better for the job, you know? Yeah. And I think that's also part of, like, you know, being a good leader is knowing when to bow out, mm -hmm. you know, and, and say, hey, listen, I can't do this. I know you can. Mm -hmm. You could do this. And I'll just be in the back. You yeah. Know? So as long as the job gets done, you know, because yeah. at the end of the day, you want to make sure that product is... Quality over quantity yeah like, yeah because it's one thing to just be booked all the time but it's like okay but what happens when you do one bad job and now again word of mouth facts so you always want to make sure that you know you're giving people quality and sometimes more than what they've even paid for mm -hmm. that's how you stay in the rotation yeah so one question i have for you like as far as working with like other artists other talent have you ever had someone kind of like mess up or give you like a bad reputation not that i really know of i feel like there might be one happening right now okay i don't know if it's really happening and it was sort of my fault but it was also it was it was a very complex situation but okay. um i don't know if they're like going around saying anything bad because they still would like to use me so i'm just like all right but you know we had a bad day Okay. And you you felt that or you like saw it? I was there for it. It, okay. it, it happened. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it happened. Um, we just had a bad day overall. I don't really think there really is other than one client possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But other than that, not really. Yeah. Because I, I show everybody love. I treat everybody right. Mm -hmm. You know, like another reason for that is like, again, it's in my living room. So like yeah. you're coming to my home. You know what I'm saying? And I'm already kind of weird about certain people coming to your home. You know what I'm saying? You know where I live. So it's like. You, yeah, you definitely have like faith and trust in people because, God, yeah, faith, like, God. damn, yeah. Like, you have to be very, oh, I guess, but, trusting uh, and open to have yeah. people in your house. Like, do you screen people? Like, not really. I mean, you just. You go off vibes. Vibes. I, I'm I'm also like I kind of check their page a little bit just to see what they're about because people are usually hitting me up through like Instagram or something. Yeah. Um, and I check their page a little bit, but also you know, God protects babies and fools, and I guess I'm a fool. <laughs> I thought you were about to say because I'm a baby. I'm a baby. No, I mean, I'm, no, I'm a fool. I'm I'm you know I'm crazy. Um. Yeah. Nah, but also you know you also have to you know, have awareness of life, you know, and understand that there are people who will see you as a come up or a mm -hmm. lick. And then they also have to, you know, figure out how they're going to go about it. And one of the things that I always let it be known is that, you know, I live in Patterson. 
and I'm also from Patterson before I'm from Bergen County. So, you know, I'm not dumb and I know how to protect myself because then I have neighbors too. If I'm coming in and out the house with equipment, people are seeing like $800 speakers, yes, $2,000 yeah. keyboards, yeah. things like that. People pay attention. People aren't dumb. So I would hope that people know that I will do what I got to do to protect my so stuff So what my you're house. saying is hmm. you got a Glock. <laughs> So what you're saying is, I didn't say anything. <laughs> I just said I just I just know how to protect myself and my things and my 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 peace in my home. He said you guys can try it if you want to, but it'll it's be, not gonna go well. <laughs> it's yeah, gonna I'm, be like a taken situation. It's just, Good it luck. Literally, <laughs> it won't it won't end well. And I got hella cameras everywhere yeah. too. So yeah. it's like you're gonna be caught in 4K. Like, right. Not 4K. I'm like, bad. no, they'll get caught in 4K, like calling the police for, for, for help on me. But <laughs> that's what would happen. But Damn. Let's, you know, that's not It's giving either. equalizer. <laughs> I live in Patterson. I live in the hood. No, I feel that. Even I, if I didn't, though, Jesus. even if I lived anywhere else, I feel like it would be more of a reason for people to try it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. if, like if I lived in like Inglewood Cliffs or Paramus or something, you know what I'm saying? I feel like oh, if it was in like a mini mansion house, which mm. is why also I'm doing this for now. But yeah, the, the goal is a venue eventually, right. and then I can t- you know turn it into like my own SOBs or whatever, mm-hmm. my own Alpha Wave Studios, mm-hmm. serve food, yeah, hookah, have live performances, and a Super bunch of dope. different things going on. You know, a dance studio mm-hmm. where people can work on choreography as well, an actual rehearsal room, something you know. Yeah, a room where people can rehearse yeah. for real and then have the actual venue. Mm-hmm. So, I'm trying to find some warehouses. It'll happen. It'll yeah, happen. It, the, honestly, I've already been looking. The uh, issue I've been having is that when you go like for that, like everything is a zoning thing. So mm-hmm. I found like the perfect spot, and they're like, "Yeah, this is for commercial use only." And I'm like, "Well, it's a commercial business, kind right. of." They're like, "Nah, that's not what we mean." Like. So there are factories like in in like there, like pa- power supply plants, okay, like things like that next to it. It's like one of those like gotcha. are, are distributing companies. So to run like something that they consider to be retail because it's yeah. not commercial to them, mm. you know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, that foot traffic in a commercial area isn't safe. Mm. It's a whole thing. You got to go with the right shit. Literally, yeah. I've, yeah, literally, you'll find the right place. At the right time, like it'll it'll just appear. Not for sure. I'm yeah. hoping, but then Jersey be taxing, so I'm. Man, listen. In <laughs> That's due time. a whole nother conversation, right? Got. That's why I rent. You know, like a lot of people think that, like, like when my girls come to um, mm-hmm. take classes here, they're like, "Oh, do you own this place?" I'm like, "Hell no!" Like, I'm cool with renting right now. You yeah. know, it also gives me the freedom to like bounce around and stuff like that and travel. But but I feel like it works for like but for me I would have to have like things set every time when I rent and who wants to travel with all this equipment mm-hmm. and then you have to sound check line check yeah all this, then you got to make it safe so that there's not wires in people's way people right. don't trip there's a lawsuit yeah like it becomes a lot when you do it that way and so the other thing you could do is rent a venue that has everything already yes then that becomes taxing now mm-hmm. it's like okay you know is the profit gonna you know, outweigh the cost. Right. And now you got to run numbers and it's like, if, <laughs> does it make sense? And, yeah. And if it's not making sense, it's like, eh. So I, I do like events like that, like once, maybe twice a year. Mm-hmm. Like just try not to do it because I really don't do it for the profit too much. Like my main goal is always like making sure that my musicians are paid and taken care of for the night. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I just want people to come out, have a good time, vibe out, mm-hmm. you know, one of the things that, that worked out really, really well was I started partnering with a DJ who goes by the name of Classic New Waves. She's, like, in Brooklyn um, and does, like, a lot of the New York area. Mm-hmm. And we've been doing some sold-out events where she'll have the band playing behind her while she's DJing. And it'll be, like, Ooh. the throwback R&B nights, things like that. Ooh. Yeah, it's called uh, Lavender and Velvet. You can also follow that. Ooh. Uh, When's Lavender. the next one? I believe it's... November. We okay. just did one um 
what is it, July 19th at SOBs. It was okay. our first time doing that at SOBs. Mm-hmm. Um, and they want us to come back in November. We were supposed to do one this month at Dumbo House because we usually do Dumbo House a lot, especially during the summer. Yeah. Um, we'll do the main floor and sometimes the rooftop. So that might still happen this month. I'll keep you posted. Yeah, I'd love to pull up. And gotcha. we could. That one, I got to gotta put you on the list for those, though. That's the. That's what on the list. Yeah. <laughs> now, like, Dumbo House is like um, an RSVP, like, kind of like invite only kind of situation. Mm-hmm. But, like, the SOBs and things like that. Yeah, I can throw you on that easily. I'm an artist. Just tell them that. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's a fun vibe, too. It's like, yeah. it's literally like all your favorite throwback R&B, early 2000s, 90s, you know. Once in blue, they're throwing some like Patty LaBelle too. You yeah. Know? Like, if only you knew. That, like, we'll do stuff like that Come all the on, time. Come on, Jamie, give us a no. <laughs> give us a no, Jamie. Th- that's the one thing I can't do. <laughs> I can't say. I cannot. I wish I could. Yeah. I really do. That's like the one thing I wish I could do. Yeah. Like, you never what? know. You could train. <clears throat> <laughs> no. I'm dead. I want to get back into singing. I yeah. like stop singing for quite some years and like i'm feeling like i'm ready to pop Inspired back out again. yeah you should yeah you should definitely do it i'm about to just sit in here and like sing on the mics like this is it's literally that easy i mean you got all the equipment you might as well listen pra- practice and and get back to it and then hit me up and then i'll get you with the band Ooh, stop i'm nervous <laughs> i'm shy <laughs> That's how I am too. I, I'm, I'm very shy. People don't know that though. Wait, what's your sign? I'm a Libra. Oh my god, I love Libra. Right? Aren't we just like the best? Um, I don't know about that, but <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. But yeah, I love Libras. Like I've always dated Libras. Hasn't always gone, you know. Yeah, great. We but a lot. We a lot. I'm good friends with Libras. Like I feel like we vibe. Yeah, well. no. Nah, so everyone always says that. Like, um. They don't. They don't like us in relationships, though. They people think Libras are mean. That's the thing. I wouldn't say that. Uh-uh. I, feel I like, would say the opposite. Like y'all are too nice. I think y'all are too nice. I feel like it's like you know it's a scale. So yeah. I feel like for me, the way I look at the scale is like, all right, one side is like what I'm getting, the other side is what I'm gonna give, based off of that. So if we here with it, if you giving me niceness. Then I give you even niceness. Now you give me mean. I'm, you know, okay. And I weigh it like, okay, how much are we gonna go until I like? Yeah. Tip the scale. I feel that. I feel that. One thing I've learned about being an entrepreneur is that we always need multiple sources of income. Okay, <laughs> when things are a little crazy with the sales or not looking so good we can always fall back on those other additional sources of income so that's why i started drop shipping it's one of the best ways to make some extra money increase customer relationships bring value to your business as well as grow your brand awareness I use Printful for all of my shop items. It's super easy if you're an entrepreneur. I know you're probably thinking like, I do not have time to sit here and like order inventory and I'm not trying to hold a bunch of inventory, but I got you, okay? I wouldn't recommend anything that's going to take up more of your time that you don't have. So with Printful, all you have to do is go on, pick your designs. They even have like pre-designed templates. So if designing shirts and hats and merch is not your thing, then don't worry because because you have plenty of options to choose from on Printful. So all you have to do is just create an account, go in. They have so many options as far as products. You can do hats, bucket hats, snapbacks, dad hats, t-shirts, tanks. They even have sneakers and they also have like pet products. I definitely need to get Milo like a cute little bandana. So they have so many things to choose from. It's super easy. And if you use something like Wix or any website like Etsy, you can actually connect Printful directly to your e-commerce website and it'll sync up your items and then you could sell them directly from your website. So it's super easy, very, very easy. All the analytics are there so you can go and check your sales every single month. So if you're interested, check out the link in the show notes and set up your Printful account, okay? Because this year we're all about making money, honey. So check out Printful and let's get this bag. So before we wrap up today, 
can you give some advice to someone right now who's like a creative and artist, musician, singer, dancer, whatever, who is feeling like they might be stuck in a place of like, not really knowing if they could like make money or make a career out of their talents and maybe they're feeling like damn like I'm always going to be stuck in this nine to five I'm always going to have to you know keep a job or whatever and like maybe they don't have the support around them to Mm -hmm. like pursue their dreams what would you tell them um honestly I feel like one obviously don't give up just keep having faith in yourself and your ability and your craft and what you do and also keep putting in the work put your 10,000 hours in constantly don't like ever stop that whether you're making the money or not now if you're pursuing it and you get a little disappointed or discouraged while you're trying to you know monetize it and it's not happening that way definitely remember like it's like uh Swiss Beat said there's a million ways to get it you know what I'm saying maybe try a different lane you know you're you're trying to go in the front door when you maybe you need to go to the back door you know or the side door you know or sneak in the club (laughs) you know what I'm saying right but there's so many ways to do it. And honestly, people got to also remember, because this is very important, is that someone telling you no is just their opinion of how they came to the conclusion of it. It's not everyone. You know yeah, what I'm saying? their perception. Yeah, like yeah. one person's going to tell you no, the next person's going to tell you okay. You know, it's like when you apply for a job, any mm-hmm. job, you know, you've got to have that same mindset and that same mm-hmm. approach. You know, this job is telling you no, even though you know you're qualified. This one is telling you, okay, sure, but you're asking for too much. And then this one is like, okay, this is all you want? Mm-hmm. Bet. You yeah. Know? So that one no from whoever doesn't mean shit. Mm. Like, again, packaging and product, you know what I'm saying? Make sure that the product that you're offering is always, like, of high quality, you know, high value. And then I guess the part that I even learned is, like, how you package it. Package it well and well enough to be presented it like it's like what's the, what's that show with the sharks the sharks shark tank i don't yeah, be watching yeah, that shark tank i don't really watch <laughs> it but you know how people are there and they're pitching ideas you know what i'm saying like yeah you have a great product but then how are you packaging it mm-hmm. you know how are you selling it you know and you got to remember that you are the product sometimes and how do you sell yourself you mm-hmm. know how are you dressed how do you speak you know are you well versed with anything Facts. you know what i'm saying yeah and then now when it's time to show them this is what I can do and here's what I have done, you know, always be ready, you know, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And then when you're doing that, because especially in this industry, Mm -hmm. you can get a call. Like we're in a, in a entertainment last minute gigging industry, you know, Mm -hmm. I can get a call right now and somebody be like, yo, I need you tonight. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, like right now, like Jamie Foxx is in town. He needs a keyboard player. Yeah. Okay, bet. Like, I got to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And I actually have to know what I'm doing to... Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you never know. Because we're all waiting on our big break. You know what I'm saying? But just keep at it and and make sure what you're selling is high value, high quality. And keep faith. Don't stop. That's really it. Mm -hmm. Everything's a gamble. But, you know, no risk, no reward. I hate using cliches, but it's facts. Yeah. It's true, though. It's true. You have to. You got to, like, just put yourself out there. And yeah. you have to, like we were talking about before the show, like you have to connect with the right people, network, put yourself out there. Yeah. Can always just be trying to like up level and outdo yourself. Yeah. I mean, especially like I, I'm, I consider myself to be introverted. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like really going outside. I don't like going to the bars or the clubs or anything. Like when people see me, they're like, oh, you're always outside. It's like, eh, I'm working. Right. Like your job is yeah, social. Literally, I have to. And once in the blue, I'll go out to a bar because I have to do that Mm -hmm. as well. That's the part that just comes with the territory. You Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You have to meet people. You have to network. You have to show your face. You have to, you know, carry business cards sometimes and let people know this is what I do. This is how I do it. You know, whatever. If you don't carry a business card, everybody has a smartphone. Get a little barcode that you could just have and Mm -hmm. let them scan it. You know, the QR code. Yeah. You know, everything like that. There's little ways of marketing. I've seen one person had a tattoo of their QR code. (laughs) What? Yeah, no. they tattooed their QR no, code to didn't. themselves, and they were like, "Where no. can I follow you? Got a business card?" They was like, "Yo, pull out your smartphone. Here, it's my tat." They was like, "No way," but it worked because it, it, no it drew people in. <laughs> he packaged it very well. It was like, wow. "Wow!" Like, so people are so stuck on how he did that that they forgot. Like, we don't care how good you are on this or that, but like that was smart. 
So people what if just, that shit stops working? <laughs> I hope <laughs> no. not. I mean, because it, it it leads them to their uh, it leads them to like their Instagram or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. it's like you better keep paying for your domains wow. and all of that. Yeah, exactly. You keep your link tree or whatever. Yeah, you know. but it was smart though. It, it, that it, is it, smart. It's an attention grabber. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I'm not doing that. Right. <laughs> but it works. So whatever you know, works for you. Listen, and again, it's like think outside of the box is always like one of those things like yeah i i wasn't like renting equipment until somebody just realized that i had it and they were like well i can rent it from here but they're charging a lot like mm-hmm. how much would you charge me to rent it and i'm like charge you i wasn't thinking about it uh, i don't know i'll get back to you yeah <laughs> like, yeah it's like it's always one of those things where it's mm-hmm. just like okay new business new, new, new door opportunity opens. yeah you it's know? true it's true so it kind of turned into that whole sort of thing mm-hmm. but um I definitely recommend, again, just all of that, you know, have faith in yourself, think outside the box, um, don't listen to the no's, you know, mm-hmm. Keep, you get 99 no's and you get one yes and that one yes is the only one that might even matter, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and just trust God's timing too, you know what I'm saying, like that's really one of the biggest things like we don't even know what opportunities like we don't even know what we missed out on because it could have been bad for you yeah you know what i'm saying and that's like okay if you were running five minutes late right and it's like well if you were on time this bus came at this time that bus might have hit you if you were on time so don't don't always like think too much into it or overthink it just like kind of go with the flow put in your work and then trust everything else yeah and trust not it. be so stuck to like timelines like oh by 30 i gotta do this and by oh, 40 so i gotta overrated. be here and like overrated i won't lie though i made a post the other day because i'm 32 so i'll be 33 in october mm-hmm. and i made a post the other day like you know we're kind of getting at that age where it's kind of time to like cash in on that uh so if you single and i'm single no, at this time let's no. just go half on a kid no it is not Listen. do not do that terrence no <laughs> 32 is young i'm 32 it, it, i feel like i'm just starting my life to be honest with you yeah but i'm I, I, i'm ready for a kid too i, I, love I mean kids. no I'm that's really cool ready. yeah definitely um believe in yourself trust god's timing you know um keep practicing and working on your craft you know the work doesn't stop i don't care if you achieved your goal now make a new one you know and that's the other thing too always make a new goal Mm -hmm. you know um and just make sure your product and your packaging is always high value yeah you know and that's really it just oh and of course it doesn't matter if 10 people say no if one says yes you're good to go facts facts i love that amazing advice thank you so much for coming on the show i would love to have you back i always like bring my my guest back at some point yeah i'll I'll come back that'd be cool next time i play the piano or something yes the real jamie fox let's go (laughs) i I might play a jamie fox song (laughs) Yo, you know what's crazy? He actually has a picture with Jamie Foxx. You got to send that so I could I put that you. in the promo. <laughs> it's from, damn, that's Catfishing. From, Be like, yeah, I got Jamie on the show this mm-hmm. week. Oh, that was six years ago. Yeah. It's crazy. I met him again right after. It was at, when I took that picture, it was like a two-day event. And then, yeah. Um, but when I first met him, the funniest story behind that was he was shook. Really? Yeah, oh, because... The he, resemblance. He was shook when I met him, but I'll get into that next time. Yeah. Right. Ooh, yeah. Well, tell the people where they can find you on Instagram. So, you can find me, the person, at T on Keys. That's T E E O N K E Y S. That's pretty much anywhere you can find me for the most part. And you can find the business at The Living Room in J on Instagram and underscore The Living Room in J on TikTok. I think that's pretty much it. If you want to send an email or anything, uh, the email is on the page. But if you don't go to the page, living room sessions in j at gmail.com. That's a lot. People <laughs> we'll already, link it. People took the living room in j. 
Stop He's taking, so mad about that. <laughs> stop taking my domain name if you're not using it. He's mad about that. We'll link it in the show notes. Thank you so much for coming on. If you guys are listening on Spotify or Apple, make sure you rate and review the podcast, preferably five stars if you're loving the show, and follow us over on Instagram, Kitty, and Let's Just Be Real Pod. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to this channel, like this video, drop a comment, and we'll see you guys in another episode. Take care, y'all.